right, guys, we've been waiting over a year, but the 2020 Contender Series is here. Over the next 10 weeks, the UFC will be putting on events every Tuesday with top prospects fighting each other with the hopes to win a UFC contract. Guys, I am Keith Schillen. I am a writer for Cage Side Press, Sherdog, and I'm the executive producer of the Loudmouth MMA Podcast Network and the Sherdog Radio Network. I will be giving you my breakdown of every single fight during this series. I'll be giving my predictions, telling you who I think wins contracts. If you're not familiar with the Contender Series, this is how it goes. Every week, there'll be five fights of the best regional fighters they will perform, they'll fight, and the, those who win their fights, if they impress Dana White, who is in the attendance, they will get a contract um, and move on to the UFC. Uh, like I said, I'll be giving my predictions. Uh, some things to add, I'm going to give you my lock pick, and I will try to pick at least one upset. I'll call it my upset special. Uh, I've been doing, well, I've been a fan of MMA since I watched UFC 6. When I was 13 years old. Uh, but I've been doing the media prediction game for about three, three and a half years now. I would say the thing that I'm most known for or probably got the most props is my contender series preview. Uh, it used to be a written form. It first started when I was on fan sided, uh, in the 2018 season. It was a pretty in depth write, uh, write up and predictions. I brought that over to Sherdog last year, um, and now in 2020, now that I'm doing the Sherdog Radio Network, I said, let's do it in a podcast form. It seems like people would probably appreciate that more. So let's get to it. Uh, we're supposed to have five fights, but just breaking news, of course, after I've done film study, James Lynch, who I think might have been the first person who announced this fight, announced that Kenny Cross would take on DeMonte Robinson. Uh, it looks like that fight is actually not going to happen. Devontae Robinson has not been cleared to fight, according to James Lynch. Uh, James Lynch is obviously a very credible media member, so I'm going to take his word for it. Uh, just for curiosity's sake, if you wonder who I was going to take, I was going to take uh, Cross. I was very confident he was actually going to be my lock pick. Uh, so I'll go with a different lock. But let's get right into it, guys. <clears throat> uh, first fight. We have Jose Luke Flores taking on Jordan Levitt. Let's look at uh, Mr. Flores first. Flores is 32 years old. He's, he's a fighter coming out of Texas. He's been really inactive lately as he's only fought three times in the last three years. Uh, he is a Dana White Contender Series veteran, uh, but he, when he fought in the very first season, but he lost to Matt Favola. Um since then, he's been fighting in Combates America, where he's gone two and zero. But one of those wins, uh, I, I got to mention, was a a victory where he got uh, the, the fighter broke his arm like almost immediately at the beginning of the fight, so it wasn't uh, the most impressive win. Uh, Flores is southpaw. He tends to keep his hands kind of low. Um, he marches forwards with his hands low. Um, he throws a lot of kicks, and they're hard kicks uh, to the body. Uh, Levitt could really take away uh, some of that effectiveness by fighting in the southpaw stance, something that Levitt does. Le Levitt likes to switch stances. Um, and if he's fighting the southpaw stance, uh, the kick to the body won't be as effective. Um, he does use, Flores does use oblique kicks, that, that thing that John Jones made famous, if you know what I'm talking about, when he's like, Kicking the kneecap area of of your opponent. Um, another thing I like that he does is he uses step in knees, which going back to all my all the way my time uh, <laughs> doing calling a fight with my good friend David Chicken Palm Stewart, which we got to bring that back. Um, we always talked about the step in knees, something I think doesn't get used enough in MMA. Things that you see a lot in Muay Thai competition. Um, the other thing I like about Flores is he's a good clinch fighter, uh, especially on the breaks. He does very well at um, landing shots when he it looks like he's about to exit the clinch. A lot of guys will just exit the play out. He, he, when he exits, he looks to land a shot. Uh, he is a good grappler. Um, he has a submission threat both on top and off his back. The one thing I don't like about him, and I say this, I seem to say this about so many Jesus guys, is I don't like that he kind of plays 
uh, dojo jujitsu or the you know gym jujitsu where he likes to look for submissions off his back instead of scrambling. Now he has gotten submission off his back, but I still think uh, that is not effective in the long run of MMA. Though he did get a butterfly sweep against Matt Favola in their contest, and that fight was pretty competitive until Favola, um, you know, got the got the finish. Uh, one thing I don't like about Flores is instead of defending takedowns, a lot of times he'll jump to a guillotine trying to catch that. Something that, um, if you go back a couple weeks ago, I was tearing up Dustin Poirier for doing. I don't think it's that. You know, it, it works for some people, but I think. It fails people a lot more than it helps. Um, on top, Flores, uh, he's got some pretty good ground pound. He likes to sit in guys' guards and uh, use that like Tito Ortiz style, style like rolling elbow game. Um, cardio is a bit of an issue as he slowed down in the past, which could uh, could happen this fight being that Jordan Levitt is so aggressive. Jordan Levitt, uh, let's move over to him now. This guy, I love his nickname, the Monkey King. He's only 25 years old, which is always, you know, anywhere between 26, 27 down. They can always make huge jumps and improve, especially the, you know, the lower you get away from that line, you're 22, 23. You should expect to see big jumps and improvement, and Levitt is at that age. Levitt is undefeated, 6-0. and He trains out of syndicate MMA, so he definitely has the advantage when it comes to uh, high-powered teams. Uh, he's a former featherweight who's moved, who um, had to move up to lightweight due to um, extreme weight cutting that really affected his kidneys. That said, he is actually a massive feather. He's a really big guy. This guy is all about his grappling. He's a super, super slick grappler. He will shoot immediately, um, try to get the fight to the ground any way possible. Even, I mean, he's got uh, Imanari roll submission, like roll, you know, Imanari roll right into like a heel hook. Um, He's a okay wrestler. He's more of a funk style wrestler, if you understand what that means. Like he's not a powerful shoot in your hips, pick you up, slam you, double A kind. He's more of a funk where he wants to just get in close and start a scramble. Um, and he's pretty wild with his hips, um, which he loses position and um, kind of puts himself in some compromised position. Um, but that's because he's very aggressive and he's constantly looking to catch a submission. Um, he's got great flexibility, good back takes. Um, he's, uh, like I said, when I said he's creative, like he'll get a Darce choke and a scramble. Um, he had this one really good Kimura when he was an amateur that was super slick. Uh, I saw him get a crucifix in one of his fights. Um, kind of like makes up moves as you go. Like he was in these weird positions, never where he's going to be. Um, let's go down to his stand-up game. I mean, his stand-up game is absolutely atrocious. Um, uh, I've seen a lot of interviews that he's done recently where he talked about um, improving his striking game and that he's been working on it so much. I don't see it. Um, this guy is so uncomfortable on the stand-up. He wants to get the fight down immediately. He was uh, I seen him one time. He was butt scooting across the mat because he didn't want to stand up. Just he was, and he was. When I say butt scooting, I mean he was like chasing the guy down from the butt scoot, not just sitting there like, you know, for Vicio Verdum calling Alsa over him. No, he was actually like cornering the guy by chasing him. Um, he's like he's really uncomfortable, very stiff. Um, he switches stances a lot, but I think that's because he's not comfortable in either position. Doesn't like either position. He keeps his head straight up. When I say his stand up is bad. I think I saw his first four fights. He didn't land a single strike in those fights. Um, cardio is also an issue. There was one fight. Um, he got a submission, I think, in the second round, but it was starting to get – like he started getting tired really quickly in that fight. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not, a big, not that big a fan of his stand-up game. Talking about um, his interviews, I, I – one thing I know is he, you gotta check out his interviews. He might have the wimpiest voice in MMA. <laughs> he's not it, but, uh, he's got a really slick, uh, really, really slick, uh, juice game. Um, who's gonna win? Flores is going to have to survive, uh, quick, a quick submission from Levitt. You know, and he's that dangerous. He's that creative. Um, if Levitt wins, it'll likely be a spectacular submission early. It'll probably get him a, a contract based on being undefeated. Um, but I'm actually going to go with Flores. He's more well-rounded. Um, 
if he can keep it standing, and that's a huge if against Levitt, um, I think he can wear him out and outpoint him to a decision. Um, I wonder if he's going to th- – kicks are a big part of Flores' game, and I wonder if he'll, t- if he'll take back or – or I don't want to say take back, like reduce the number of kicks he throws because Levitt's going to want to catch a kick and get it to the ground. Um, this is a close fight. This is a hard fight. I'm not confident in either one, but uh, I'll take Flores. I don't think he does enough to get a contract. Uh, let's move on. We have Luis Rodriguez versus Jerome Rivera in a flyweight matchup. Let's look at Luis Rodriguez first. There's not that much film on Rodriguez. Um, I love his nickname, Lazy Boy. He's 11 1. Uh, he's a fighter out of Mexico. He has been very, very busy. Uh, he, all 12 of his professional fights have come in the last three years. From what I've seen him, he's a very aggressive striker. I mean, so aggressive, he kind of overthrows. He has like this, uh, Dan Henderson style. I always say Dan Henderson like, would throw, like, would throw so hard, get him out of position. Robbie Wallace, something does that often. Um, he throws a lot of combinations, mostly like powerful hooks. He will target the body. Um, his left hook, I saw flatten some guys. He throws a lot of spinning attacks. Um, throws hard leg kicks. Like everything is power for him. Um, he's a weak defensive wrestler, and he's not a bad. And he's not a good grappler. I saw him get mounted by guys with losing records. Um, he really struggled to get off the bottom. And the other thing that um, we have to look out for is he's moving down to flyweight. And I, I think this is the first time he's actually fighting at flyweight, which is very interesting considering this is the biggest fight at this point of his career. Uh, Joe Rivera, uh, he's only fought three times in the last three years due to a broken, a freak broken arm he suffered against uh, Brandon Royal right in the beginning of that fight. Uh, Rivera, as soon as you see him, the thing that's going to jump out to you is how tall he is. He's 5'10". And that's extremely tall for a flyweight. Um, his boxing is just okay. Nothing spectacular. But um, his kicks are good. I like his T kicks. Um, I think his the best part of his stand game might be his clinch. Um, he does very well to um, get the plumb clinch, land knees. Does well to frame, like in the clinch, get his opponent against French frame. Uh, you know, and if you don't know anything about framing, like press, pressing the guy's head away to be able to land a knee. Um, he can... Lean, he can dive into his strikes a little leaning with his chin, making him very hittable. So if you can avoid a knee or a high kick coming in, you you will be in a, you know, his opponent will be in a position to land a big shot. Um, he's a weak defensive wrestler. Um, I've seen him give up his back in scrambles. Uh, but he's actually a pretty good offense wrestler. I've seen, he'll, he'll shoot him for takedown. Once he's on top, he's got really good control. He looks to advance to a better position instead of just landing strikes. He has a submission threat. He's a, I think he's at um, seven submissions wins on his record. Uh, but the thing I really like about Rivera is his cardio. This is a guy that he builds as the fight goes along. He, you know, he might be fighting at like a eight for a pace in the first round. By second round, he's at nine. And by third round, he's at ten. He really presses on late. I like that. Uh, who's going to win? It's it's hard to take Rodriguez because of the lack of film he has. He's really fought um, some low-level fighters while Rivera's taken uh, much better competition. I don't think he has a glaring weakness like Rodriguez has. I'm not trusting my pick of Rivera because... Like I said, there's not a lot to see of Rodriguez, so I don't really, I don't really have the best grasp of him. Uh, but to make a pick, I will take Rivera. I will take a unanimous decision. Flyweights needs fighters bad. Um, will that be enough to get Rivera? You know what? I'll say Rivera gets in. I think his guy's been on the UFC he's radar for a while. He's fought in some high organization. He fought against some good competition. And just sometimes the weight class you're in will help, and they need flyaways. So let's say Jerome Rivera does get a contract. Uh, moving on to third fight of the evening, we have Euros Madish versus Mikey Gonzalez. I've been practicing Euros' name. I think I said it correctly. I might be wrong. Um, this is probably the most intriguing matchup on the card. This was the hardest one to take. Uh, Madish is 27 years old, uh, which is in that range of age where you can see improvements. He's 5-0. and He's from Siberia, but he 
has been living and training in Alaska. He's fought almost exclusively in the Alaskan Fighting Championship, uh, which is a very weak promotion. It's a promotion that likes to um, feed who they think are stars. Um, shout, out, shout out to my man, uh, Garrett Kerman, who I was talking about this fight. He mentioned about, he said, anytime he sees a fighter coming out of the Alaskan Fighting Championship, he likes to fade them. Um, that's a gambling term for basically don't pick them. Um, Madish is a southpaw. He's long and lengthy for the weight class. He's got a, uh, there was a lot of film of his like low level kickboxing. Like, I don't know if there were smokers or what. Um, but I did find a lot of, he has a lot of kickboxing experience. He's a pretty accurate, um, striker. He's got, I would say, I don't say good power, but I say plus power. Um, he throws tons of kicks. Um, and, and he does this thing that I love. You know, a lot of times you see fighters throw the hands with the kicks to follow. He actually like will like throw a kick and follow a kick with a punch. Um, uh, that's unconventional, and and that's why I like it. Um, I don't think he's a sensational athlete. Like, I don't think he's that good of an athlete. Um, takedown defense is an issue. Um, he likes to lay on his back instead of scrambling, which I don't like. Though he has gotten submissions off his back, which is, you know, uh, something I said earlier about, um, is it Luke Flores? Um, Madish, when he's been on his back, he looks for knee bars, he looks for heel hooks, he like, like he likes attacking the legs. Um, cardio is a major question mark. Um, I haven't seen him slow down, but when I say question mark, is that simply because he hasn't gone past the second round? Uh, let's move to Mike Gonzalez. He's a lot older. He's 34 years old. He's from California. I shouldn't say a lot older, but he's always seven years older. Uh, he's 34 years old. He's from California. He's on a four fight winning streak, uh, though I should point out that he has really fought some low level competition. You could argue even worse than the competition, uh, Madish has fought in the Alaska Fighting Championship. Um, which is probably why I'm intrigued by this because it's probably the hardest fight to pick. Um, Zealous, when I say he's fought low level fighters, he, only two of his wins have gone against guys with a winning record. Um, on the feed, he has this like karate or taekwondo type style, traditional martial style. He sees he's in a very bladed stance. Um, he likes to fight from both positions, but I would say Southpaw is more dominant position. He has some pretty good snap on his punches. He loves his hook kick. Uh, he does well to keep his distance. Um, he keeps his hand. He puts his hands in front of him, like grabs at his uh, opponent's hands that he uses well, uh, very well to, to figure out his own striking range. Um, he loves to keep kicks down the middle. He loves to attack legs. He'll throw spinning attacks. Um, some of the negatives, he keeps his hands too low for my liking, which I think loses a lot of punching power. Um, as I mentioned earlier, he throws spinning attacks, but I think he just, he throws it a lot and without a game plan. Like, I don't feel, I feel like he just kind of has it in mind, like, okay, uh, okay, now, now I should throw a spinning attack. Instead of, like, seeing it in an opening, or, or, I think he just thinks, like, it's just a part of the game that every once in a while he has to throw a spinning attack. Um, he has a nickname, Mikey Rolls, because of his jiu-jitsu style. He's a very high-level BJJ protectioner. He's competed in some really good tournaments. Though, when you watch his fights, he hardly ever goes for takeout, hardly ever uses his jiu-jitsu. I've seen him uh, use his jiu-jitsu more defensively. If someone will shoot on him, he might uh, lock in a standing guillotine or something like that. Um, cardio also is an issue. He's only gone to decision once, and in that one fight, it was only actually it was only a a nine minute matchup. It was three three minute rounds and that was because they were fighting California close to where California were having fires and the fires are affecting the air quality in the area. Um who wins this fight? Um I'm making this my upset pick. I'm gonna take Mikey Rolls. Uh like I said it's very hard to trust either guy as they both fought against some really low level. But what I've seen of Rolls, he styled on his competition. Well Madish has it. Like, Rolls was very comfortable having fun out there. Um, give me Rolls by United decision. I think he's flashy enough uh, to be, you know, remembered. And I think that'll get him a contract with UFC. So I will say Mikey Rolls gets a contract with UFC. Uh, going on to the main event, we have Ty Flores versus Dustin Jacoby. Uh, I'll start with Ty Flores. 
I didn't like what I, I saw Phil with Ty Flores. Ty Flores is this lumbering, unathletic fighter. He's he's long and lengthy. He does throw a lot of kicks. He ends his combination with kicks, which I do like. Um, he will go for a takedown. Uh, I, let me back up. I don't want to go to the wrestling. Um, but that's about it he does. I mean, when I say he throws a high kick, that's about it. Um, his striking is ugly. Um, very really slow. Uh, he will go for a takedown himself and is a submission threat, but his takedown defense is really bad. Like there was, uh, I forgot which matchup he had. Uh, the guy was shooting on him and like was slamming him. Um, Justin Kobe's 32 years old. He's a, a veteran of Bellator and he's actually fought in the UFC in the past. Um, probably <laughs> forgotten as he went 0 and 2, losing to not the best competition, Chris Camozzi and Clifford Starks. Um, He's also lost to John Salter, King Mo. He fought in the um, PFL. or might have been World Series fighting back then. Dave, yeah, it was Costa was World Series fighting. Uh, David Branch. Um, he does have some quality wins. He beat Tim Williams, Andrew Sanchez, Cody East, all those guys, UFC uh, veterans. And he has fought one MMA fight in the last four and a half years. Uh but he has been active because he's been competing in kickboxing in the highest level on the lower kickboxing circuit. Um, as I mentioned, he has fought guys like Chris Cabozzi and Clifford Starks in the UFC. That was because he used to be a middleweight, so he's a little undersized. Um, I'd say little. Like I don't think I don't think Flores, Flores is going to be bigger than Flores. is actually tall um, for the weight class, but Flores I don't think is going to be towering him in size. Um, as I expect, I said he fought in the glory kickboxing. He's a good striker. He cuts uh, he cuts angles really well. Like he'll instead of just moving back or or well, it just that move back, you use lateral movement or he'll just turn the corner. Um, I would attack something similar to what Israel Asani was doing. Rob Whitaker. Now I'm not saying he's Israel Asani was striking, so don't lean too much of that. Um, he's everything he does is off a of jab. Um, he throws a lot of straight punches. Uh, his one two is really good, especially his like he 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 kind of parries with his right hand, like a punch him, he'll parry on the top of his right hand. And if you don't know what I mean by parrying, parrying is like when someone throws a punch at you, you block it, but in like a in a pushing down motion. So he'll parry, pushes like the punch coming, you push it down, and you'll parry with the right hand, and then he'll use that pushing down opening to throw the left down the pipe. Um, that's something that he does really good. Uh, I love that he conserves his energy by not loading up power and everything. It's like he just touches, and that's something that I've really enjoyed watching as I've learned that best strikers will just touch, 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 and then when they see open, that's when they land the shot. Uh, really nice low kicks. Um, surprisingly, um, other than cutting angles, um, he doesn't like a all-out pressure. Like if you come out him swinging hard, uh, like a berserker, he does not like that. Um, early in his career, he was pretty hittable. I mean, he was hurt on the feet by Chris Camozzi. Um, he was a bad defense player, like David Branch took him down a lot, King Mo took him down a lot. Uh, but though, in the Cody East fight, his last fight, he stopped all of Cody East's takedowns. And he always had a pretty good get-up game. Like King Mo, who's a very high international wrestler, actually struggled to keep um, keep him down. So I like that. So who wins this fight? Um, this just comes down to if Flores can take down Jacoby and, and keep him down, and I don't think he can. Uh, he's really slow. Um, he's like he gets takedowns, but he's not this powerful wrestler. I think Jacoby can stop the takedown similarly did against Cody. Ace. Pick him apart at range, and I, I think he can bloody him up. Eventually, get in his stop in the third round, uh, get a TKO, and I think that gets him a contract. I'm so confident in this pick. Um, it was not going to be my lock of the night. That was going to be Kenny Cross. That fight is canceled, so I got to pick one. I'm going to go with Jacoby. I'm going to say Jacoby's my lock of the night. I think he wins. Uh, so you guys have it. There are all my Dana White contender Perry's picks. Let me recap them real quick in case you were. You know, fast forward and rewind. I know people, how people do it. I, I listen to podcasts that way. So here's my picks. I have Luke Flores, is o, Luke Flores over Jordan Levitt by unanimous decision. That is a slight underdog pick. I got John Rivera over Luis Rodriguez 
by unanimous decision. I get Mikey Gonzalez over Euros Minish by unanimous decision. Um, that is my upset pick of the night as I picked two underdogs, but that was my, my biggest underdog pick. And my lock of the night is the main event. Dustin Co- Jacoby over Tyler Flores by third round TKO. There you are, guys. Have it. Those are my picks. Uh, hope you like them. Reach out to me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. My my um, handle is at Keith Schillen MMA. Let me spell you my last name for you. It's S H I L L A N. So at Keith Schillen MMA on Twitter. Tell me your picks. Um, yeah, we'll see how we do this week. Uh, I'll be back next week. We have five more fights next Tuesday. So. Check it out on Loudmouth MMA and the Sure Dog Radio Network. Talk to you guys later.